The um, project that I've been involved with recently has been um, designed to draw students into research more directly in the first year. It all, its real background was to do with um, a project that was funded nationally to look at inquiry uh, and students learning through inquiry in laboratories. And one thing that I found that the, would, we were interested in was linking students to external research outside of UTS. So the, the experiment today um, was linking students to nationally important research and having them do hands-on work in the laboratory in a standard laboratory class. And this is first year students, the very first semester at university. In Australia, we're bathed in sunshine a lot of the time. We don't make enough use of solar energy as a renewable source. There's huge interest in a lot of research teams around the country working on different types of technologies to um, exploit solar energy. And one area is in photovoltaics, otherwise known as solar cells. And in Melbourne, a group at CSIRO are developing what are called organic solar cells. And they they lead in a consortium of people, researchers in different companies and in different universities to develop different parts of the technology. How do you seal the solar cells? How do you make contacts to the solar cells? So it's really a cutting edge thing and it's something that I wanted my students to have direct contact with, not to hear about only, but to do, to be involved in a direct way. And CSRO are really keen to give my students and other students that direct link to the research. So I engage them by asking them to sort of draw on their general knowledge uh, or what they've heard in the media about our sources of energy. So, and through that, we'll get an idea, you know, do the, nearly all of them, for example, realize that coal is the major source of energy. So they are pretty well tuned into what the um, situation is, although they may not know the percentages of energy that's from each source. And then we ask the question, well, um, how much do we get from solar? So solar energy, how much of that do we convert? Um, and it turns out very small amount and that becomes the pivotal question. Why do we have so little of our energy from that source and what can we do about it? So the starting point is to give them a silicon solar cell and get them to look at the uh, characteristics. How much power do you get out of the solar cell? Can the students work out the efficiency of the solar cell? This, if you like, acts as a baseline. This is what we've got today. And um, how do organic solar cells compare with that? So they spend some time learning the techniques of measurement on conventional solar cells and then they turn their attention to organic solar cells and essentially do the same thing. Look at the efficiency of an organic solar cell. Because um, several groups have done this experiment and I wanted to, them to, to say, well, if you had a chance to talk to the researcher, what would you ask them? And indeed, they came up with some questions and today we talked via you know, internet to the researcher to actually tease out where did it start, how much does it cost, when is it going to be mature, etc., etc. So they, the students came forward and they talked to the, the, the so the in, engagement in the in the lecture theatre as it was when we were doing this link up was 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 really really good. And you could hear a pin drop when Scott Watkins, who's the person who's the researcher, was talking about his research. So. The anecdotal evidence, the evidence that I've got before me based on what I've seen, is that there really is, they're switched on. This is a good topic. It has national, international, everyday relevance to them. So I think one of the things that's in it for CSIRO is that the, their profile is improved with the next generation of influential citizens, those that are going to be in professional positions. So it's not a specific, are oh, they going to make money out of it? They're going to have an influence and an impact and a profile that they don't have. And because we're running this experiment out to hundreds of students, this is not a small handful of students. We're going to, several hundred students each semester will do this. So if you multiply that with over the years, and even if we get more universities to do it, it could be a hugely influential start, if you like, or it's an influential thing that we'll do that will benefit, the, I say, more or less the profile. So there is that. But there's other things as well. The next generation of researchers have got to come from somewhere. How do you switch them on to the research? This is a perfect way to get the message across right from the start. And those few students that really have the um, dedication and interest to do be researchers can see in year one where it could lead them. So I think CSIRO want to see researchers coming through the 
Australian system and they don't have to buy them in from overseas. And this is one good way to plant the seed, if you like. Uh, UTS prides itself in not being a conventional university in the sense of it has a theoretical approach to the n knowledge generation. There's a place for that, but it wants to be known as practice oriented and research integrated. It wants to have a niche where it works closely with um, companies, with businesses, with national bodies, with um, organizations, scientific organizations. So to work directly with CSIRO in this way, bring it to the undergraduates, matches perfectly the new UTS mission or what we call the UTS model of learning of research integration and practice orientation. I see this very much as what you might call a proof of concept. You know, can you work with an organization? Do they get something from it? Do the students get something from it? And can it be sustained? So, and if the answer is yes, then we should be able to expand this idea to chemistry, to biology, to other areas. So I see this as a, a potentially a starting point to have a, 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 a huge impact on the undergraduate curriculum, not just in UTS, but elsewhere. I think there are three key things you get from it. First is that, that working on something that no one else has ever worked on. This is brand new cutting edge technology and it's not going through the motions of a standard physics experiment that people have been doing for decades. So that's the newness, the freshness is genuine. The second is that they get a chance to develop the experiment themselves. There's a, long, there's a large inquiry focus to it. So after they've learned a little bit of the techniques and using the instruments, then they get a great opportunity to devise their own experiment. How do solar cells respond to temperature? Whatever it happens to be, they can devise that experiment. So there's a lot of open-endedness, that's good. And the third thing that's really important is that, that what they're looking at and what they're tackling is an issue of national and global significance. We want to reduce greenhouse gases. We want to reduce global warming. Solar cells is exploiting a renewable source of energy. This is a key thing for the 21st century and it's something the students can get directly involved with through an experiment in a first year laboratory. How good is that?